we make audio version of the Bible. Our Christian brothers, most of them, they don't have this opportunity to have education, so they can listen to it. We have 147 million impression on it. Urdu audio Bible, when we launch, we see this thing. Millions of millions of people want to are interested. So good news is that they want their answers. There is a big hunger there. They want somebody to explain them how there is a hope. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton, and we are in our studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, with Kenneth Charles. Kenneth grew up in the nation of Pakistan. He is the founder of a ministry called God's Vision Ministries, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the minutes to come. Kenneth, welcome to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you very much for having me, and I know the great work of Voice of Martyrs since I was four, and <laughs> thanks to God, he put me here today. Well, we are thrilled to have you, and I want to you know, go back to the very beginning. Your brother— actually translated Tortured for Christ into Urdu. Yes. So so when you say you've known about Voice of the Martyrs since you were four, that, you're being literal. Yeah, definitely. I was like very little, and I still remember the title of that book, and it was like very attractive, especially like I was four. And it was like I grew up in a Catholic family, and Torture for Christ, Christ I know, but Torture for Christ was a question for me. It's interesting how that connection is made. How how surprising of a thought was that in Pakistan for for Christians to be confronted with a book called Tortured for Christ? Was that something that they were like, oh yeah, of course pe- Christians are tortured for Christ? Or was it a kind of a new thought for for people, you know, we're talking back in the late 70s, early 80s, when they would pick up that book, what was the response? It was like, I think, uh, just connecting us with the world because we were thinking that we are the only person in Pakistan who are being tortured or persecuted for different reasons. Just like main reason was being a Christian, born as a Christian, and then you have all life every day. You're going to have a different kind of persecution just because your name is Kenneth Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is an obviously Christian name. Talk about your testimony. How did you come to, to know Christ in, in a personal way? Yeah, actually, I do have a medical problem which was very severe. And in a house church, nobody actually prayed for me. And I was listening to the Word of God, and I got healed. I feel something is happening in my body. And then I talk a little bit more about Christ, how Christ is and how Jesus is as a personal Savior. And the pastor who was helping me leading this way, he actually explained in five minutes, which was not like a really. And very next day, I was having a bike, motorbike, and uh, I was taking him all the villages where we start preaching. I was kind of helping him. <laughs> so the day after you came to faith, uh, you kind of became his apprentice uh, to, to go and, and share the gospel. Yeah, I wanted to learn. You're born into a Christian family. In the eyes of your neighbors, you're an infidel, you, even as a small child. Like, how was it to be a Christian in that Muslim context of Pakistan? Yeah, definitely. I was uh, an infidel, and uh, I think you can see when I was playing with the kids in my street, and one of the guy he just went into his house, and he has a knife, and he attacked on me when I was like five or six. Wow. And I have this cut right here on my arm. <laughs> Even as a five or six year old, like like he's this is an infidel. He he deserves to be killed. I mean that that's the attitude 
Definitely. And he was like my age. He was not like an older guy. So the hatred, even at such a young age, he had that feeling of, I hate, like, I hate this person. He's a Christian. I should hate him. Is, is that the experience of most Christians in Pakistan, that, that they just, from a, from almost from their first breath, they deal with this idea that, that everyone is against me? My case is better than the other because I was living— uh, like my dad was an accountant, my other brothers, I'm the baby in the family, they were all educated. We were like have a lot more privilege than the other Christians in Pakistan. So when I start my ministry, then I see the real color, what they are going through. We learn one thing, the only help is prayers, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And we're going to talk in a few minutes about how our listeners can pray for Christians in Pakistan, for the church there. We're talking with Kenneth Charles. He is the founder of God's Vision Ministries. Uh, let's talk about the beginning of your ministry. You mentioned even from the, the day after you got saved, you went out with your pastor and began to serve alongside him. How did that grow into what is now God's Vision Ministries? At that time, I have bachelor. And I was, when I was reading the text, I have a lot of more understanding. And even with, from my pastor who was helped me to introduce Christ in my life. And uh, I saw that most of the clergy there is laymen. They don't have any trainings. I learned that then I was reading books, I was reading Bible, understanding like how it's going to go. I do remember when I was going to villages, the Muslim, uh, it called like the leader of the village. He was a Muslim guy. He's a landlord, very rich guy. He was coming to our talks. He was present in that, and he was saying, I, I feel peace. Interesting. And he was such a famous guy, like in a wrong way, that they make a movie out of his life. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he killed so many people. He did a lot of like bad things. But the name of Jesus and the message of peace from the Bible was helping him. Interesting. It's interesting even that he would go as a village leader and as a well-known Muslim person to say, yeah, I'm going to go to the Christian meeting. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. Is obviously there was some curiosity, some hunger for him. Yeah, there is a hunger like I have seen in my every friend. I give Bible to my friends, and they read, and they ask me questions. There is a big hunger there. But problem is that the church is not well educated to answer their questions. If you ask any pastor or most of the pastors that why Jesus is son of God, they're going to tell you every kind of different thing, but why he is. So there's a great need for leadership development and training mm -hmm. within the church in Pakistan. Yep. How can we meet that need, or, or how are you helping to meet that need uh, through your ministry? So Bible is the key. Mm -hmm. We make audio version of the Bible. We have 147 million impression on it. Wow. And then, and I saw that it's in new version, so like yeah. we can go listen to it as well if if we happen to speak Urdu. Yeah, and uh, new version just have I think in January more than five billion downloads. So I don't know five billion Christians are there on the planet. <laughs> so you can see that that's, people that's are listening reaching. it yeah. already, right? And on on our platform, there are I think millions of people. We have our apps and. Other website, the millions of people are there too. What is the literacy rate like in Pakistan for an audio Bible versus a printed Bible? Is the illiteracy rate pretty high where audio is, is really key? You know, there is another reason for the audio because the Muslim people can't carry that big book. So they can listen through their devices. Mm, okay. Even like so some, it's more secret. I mean, you can put your headphones in and it, nobody knows nobody, what you're listening yeah. to. So that's the one reason. And second reason is our Christian brothers, 
most of them they don't have this opportunity to have education so they can listen to it and uh, the second step was it was just happened miraculously that we are partnered with Oral Robert University to have seminaries across Pakistan and our main vision is to have a Christian university in Pakistan which we can do according to the constitution of Pakistan. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Kenneth Charles. He is the founder of God's Vision Ministries. Kenneth, you mentioned the idea of starting a Christian university in Pakistan. What has to happen to for that to happen, <laughs> for both from a government perspective and also from a ministry perspective? What is between us and actually having students enrolled in, in classes? Yeah, so we are having those seminaries across Pakistan since seven years. Experience, I have a lot of people, they want to listen, but there's so much barrier. And then with the Zoom, we can be present for a while. But uh, when you have that university on the ground, definitely <clears throat> when we are talking this, this is a very huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. But it can not just change Pakistan, you have Iran, and you need a presence of an uh, institute which can produce thousands of peoples. All those uh, teachers who are helping us, they are doctors, they have 40 years experience, they've been to like mission fields so many times, they live like a uh, in Africa or maybe India or somewhere many, many years. They understand the problems, so they are helping. But the good news is that with our Urdu audio Bible, when we launch, we see this the millions of millions of people want to are interested. So good news is that they want their answers. They want somebody to explain them how there is a hope. I was reading well, one of the well-known scholar, and he was saying there is a need. Everybody's soul is thrusting. You can't fill with anything else except Christ. Let's talk a little bit about what happens in a Muslim context. Somebody, a, a Muslim, a, a good, devout Muslim, downloads the audio Urdu Bible, hears the truth, and says, oh, what I've been doing is not the truth. I'm going to follow Jesus. He's the truth. What's going to happen to that Muslim? Or, or what is, what's their life likely to look like after they make that decision? I'm going to leave behind Islam. I'm going to follow Christ. So we do have, even at our platform, this conversion. Usually we direct to some of the local church, and we do have some local churches. So they help them. We really tell them don't announce like publicly right now <laughs> unless you are like totally mature and then you can defend your faith. And uh, we do have like a couple of people actually they are start working already with their siblings and with their parents. Wow. What God did in their life. So it is not happening just on our platform. It is happening across the Pakistan because – Nobody, like a human, I think they are normal peoples. But if somebody is teaching them a wrong thing, there got to be another source which teach them right things. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. You advise them to kind of keep it quiet, at least at first, for their safety or just so that they're ready to answer the questions when people ask. I think my more opinion is they should be ready to answer the question. Okay. Because so it's not just a matter of safety. It's a matter of being equipped to be able to disciple and answer the questions that come up. As a matter of fact, we do have a seminary just with those like converts. Just with converts. Ah. Yeah. So we were helping them to understand better because – Whoever is going to talk to them, they're not going to just straight kill them. They're going to ask them what happened. Yeah. Why and did I, you do this? Yeah. And at least they're going to answer 
they're going to testify what Jesus in their life. And yeah, so when I know I, I, they, it is a part of Christianity that you get persecution. Mm-hmm. Jesus promised it. What does the seminary system that, that's going on now, what does that look like? Is it, you know, you come someplace for three years and study, or you come for a week, and then you come another week, you know, six months later? How how does the classes practically operate? So these classes are like we are partnered with Oral Robert University, so they have this global learning center. In this global learning center, the professors from the Oral Robert University say they teach the same content what they taught they teach here their students. Mm, okay, and we have like individuals at their homes, and we do have a different locations where they can come and they can attend classes. We have big screens like a projector for them and sound, and then it's it's like interactive classes. They can ask questions. And usually, like one class is like an hour; it goes to hour. Okay, yeah. but they're just always they're going on all the time, so the students can sort of log in from wherever they're at yeah. and attend the class, have the interaction. Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, we do. We used to have one class in Saudi Arabia. Wow. And for now, there was a kind of like a red flag, so we have to close it. But we might restart it very soon. Wow. Yeah. May the Lord allow that to happen. That, yeah. would, that would be wonderful. Yeah. They were with us two years, so they learned a lot. They learned a lot. Yeah. That's great. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Kenneth Charles. He is the founder of God's Vision Ministries. Kenneth, one of the things I, I like to ask our guests from a Muslim context is, how do you advise us as Americans? Because we have listeners to Voice of the Martyrs Radio that they have a Muslim neighbor, or they work with a Muslim, they go to school with a Muslim, and, and they would like to share Christ with that person. Uh, I think many of us feel a little bit intimidated about that. Like you said, well, I don't know the answer to all their questions, so I'm, I can't have that conversation. Give us some advice as we're thinking about reaching out to the Muslims that are right here in our own country. Actually, I tell everybody that Christ bring them for a reason here. Amen. <laughs> and it is not like, oh, they just migrated here. Because over here, they have a freedom to accept. And uh, when you tell them about the Christ, it should be very open because in our culture, there's no closed questions. Right. <laughs> it is like <laughs> straight, you know? Which is a hard thing for a lot of Americans in particular because religions, kind of we think of religion and politics are things you don't talk about in polite company. In an Islamic culture, that's not true at all. Everyone talks about religion. Yeah, everyone talks about a religion. I had a friend, he is an attorney in uh, Manhattan, and he went to Pakistan. He said, I landed on the airport and somebody was asking me, are you Muslim or <laughs> somebody else? And he said, I was not even understanding what he was saying. <laughs> it is very common. And the same people who came here, you can share the gospel. They will listen. Is They're not going to hurt anybody. I know that. Mm-hmm. And then you can really bring them to Christ. Even you can invite them to your churches. And a lot of time I was discussing on my way with one of my professors. And uh, I was like discussing with him if somebody local bring them to Christ is more easier than me. Right. Because they know that, oh, I am from the same culture and they maybe hesitate to listen. Interesting. But they are very open. So they'd be more open to a a Native American yep. than to somebody from Pakistan, even though they're from Pakistan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, I want to encourage our listeners to to keep your eyes open around you, uh, to see, uh, strike up conversations, offer the gospel. Uh, Kenneth, one of the things we always want to equip our listeners to do is to pray. And so as, as we think about the nation of Pakistan, as we think about especially our Christian brothers and sisters there, 
what are the ways that we can specifically pray right now for Pakistan? The only thing is you can pray hard every day. Every day, even for one minute, pray for Pakistan. There is always a revival there in this country. But on the other hand, we need trained and equipped peoples who can answer all those questions. In a tea shop, you have a coffee shop here. In a tea shop, you can talk to Christ openly with any Muslim using all kind of boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and they will talk to you. And I did so many years. I have, I have uh, some of the problem, but not by sharing the word of God. So they are open. They are open. Yeah, they like to discuss. The the fields are white for harvest. Yeah. I, I think the Bible says. Yeah. Um, pray that the Lord will send out workers into the harvest field. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the street ministry that that you are doing through your ministry. What is that? What does that look like? G give me an example of of what that ministry entails. To tell you like one thing, if you go to my website. And there is a picture, there is like one of our student, he is standing in front of a mosque giving the QR-coded Bible cards <laughs> and MP3 <laughs> player to Muslim. They will take it, and you talk to them about it. It's, it's not tough. People think there are, there are some groups who are very violent, mm -hmm. but there are millions and millions of people they are not. They are open to it. Even if you go to social media, you're going to see somebody, Muhammad Yasin, mean a Muslim guy. He is asking question to himself why we are doing this. Interesting. And you can see these kind of questions a lot. But again, it is how you bring brought up a child. So they are brought up their child in a wrong way. But one verse of the Bible can change my life. It can change anybody's life. Amen. I want to encourage you this week to pray specifically for the nation of Pakistan and for the church there, uh, especially the training up of leaders. Let, let's pray for uh, specifically that God will raise up leaders and equip them and educate them uh, to be able to lead the church and, and lead uh, the Christian people there in Pakistan uh, Kenneth Charles, is there anything else that, that we haven't covered that you want us to talk about as we finish up today? Yeah. So one thing I want to talk about, if you see a mass immigration happening, I think a lot of Pauls are coming here, and they're going to go back. I'm going back myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live there partially, and I'm going to do the work for that nation. So the same thing, don't hesitate, change the world. Yes. There's a lot of souls coming to America that we can send back as Pauls uh, to carry the gospel back to their home country. And they already speak the language. They already understand the culture. Um, so it is a, an easier task for them to, to then translate God's love into that culture. Kenneth, thank you for your ministry, and thank you for being our guest this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that uh, you gave me this opportunity so I can share my heart to everybody. Well, it is our pleasure to have you, and uh, I know that there are a lot of listeners around, literally around the world uh, that will listen to this. They will pray for you. They will pray for the nation of Pakistan uh, and for God's work there. It, it is one of the one of the cool things that I get to be a part of is just sharing these stories with the wider body of Christ. So thank you for being our guest. Thank you. If you are listening, I would love to hear from you. You can come to our website, vomradio.net. Uh, there's a place there where you can send me a message. I do read those messages. I would love to hear from you. Tell me how you're praying for the nation of Pakistan, or tell me how you're reaching out to Muslims in your community and striking up conversations and sharing the gospel there. I love those kinds of notes and letters. Again, the website, vomradio.net. You can also listen to all the previous episodes of Voice of the Martyrs Radio. We've had other guests from the nation of Pakistan. You can also find VOM Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. So uh, do that. And 
Join us again next week as we continue to talk about what God is doing all around the world right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.